Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, we will uh, take it just a brief moment to introduce ourselves, but um, to give you a sense, we're talking about, um, and this is very important in esports, is is you know beyond the the gameplay aspect and what else can kids um, evolve to you know in this esports ecosystem, and you know in my opinion. Um, you know, having students become content creators is a hugely valuable skill that we can give them, you know, in school um, and, you know, and of course outside in, in other areas, you know, whether it be directly related to esports or not. Um, so our session is from player to creator, bringing out the creator in all students. And I'll let my lovely wife introduce herself and then I'll introduce myself. Do you see who's in the, who's in the session before I introduce myself? See, I don't see much. You do, Oh, that's right. You don't. Confused. Open the chat. Okay. So <laughs> while uh, Steve is opening I see the Galad. chat. Yes. Oh, Galad. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Kathy Chow Isaacs, and I am an education team consultant, uh, which means that I support the education team at um, Epic Games. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at I Wear the Crowns. And uh, we've also dropped our uh, my email address and LinkedIn. Uh, right there, and I will throw those in the chat as well. So um, what's what do I do? Uh, well, what have I done? Um, it's more like, what haven't I done? So uh, we, St Steve and I, years ago, I'm going to steal a little story from him. Uh, we uh, opened a gaming at, well, a technology training and gaming center. And so what started as, oh, yeah, we will work with um, students and adults and train them on all the wonderful uses of technology. We also, part of it was we had a summer camp and we did a lot of um, programs that were around game-based learning, like using games for learning. So we would uh, run a program where the kids were playing, oh gosh, Age of Empires, and they'd be learning history and um, ancient civilizations and stuff. And uh, the kids were psyched, the parents were psyched, and um, you know they loved this engagement that games brought them. And then the other thing that was really so that's the creator part, and then you know part of the business also we were open as an internet cafe. So we really had these ro we had these romantic notions of, ooh, people are going to come and use our, then, um, you know, at the time, we're still dialing into the internet. So we're going to people are going to use our super fast internet and surf the net with us and drink coffee. And it was weekend after weekend, the two of us surfing the internet and drinking coffee, uh, which was fine and great because we got to spend a lot of time together. And then one day, like Steve was teaching at um, the middle school in town and uh, we were very involved with newcomers. So one day some kids were came in and they were kind of like, hey, uh, we just want to hang out or one kid. I want to say said, oh, yeah, the first kid, right, came in. Oh, I want to hang out. And um, can we play this game Warcraft 2? And we're like, mm, OK, sure. And that little did we know that that was the start of everything, which uh, one kid turned to two kids, turned to more kids. And, you know, we were really onto something. It was like one of the first, you know, maybe esports experiences. And this was, gosh, many, many years ago. And so the weekends, we instead of just us hanging out romance, you know, uh, and sipping our coffee and surfing the Internet, we were packed with kids, uh, you know, getting dropped off and they had a common place to hang out. And it was really really wonderful. So, um, so I've been a technology teacher in elementary school in New Jersey and New York City. I was a research scientist for J and J, and um, you know I also had some involvement with producing a Minecraft fair uh, fi fan event for a few years. And um, uh, of late, uh, in addition to uh, helping out the education team at Epic, uh, I've also uh, done a lot of training around uh, using Minecraft in the classroom. So. So that's my story in a nutshell and a half. Thank you, Kathy. Thank uh, you. <laughs> my name is Steve Isaacs. Um, I'm currently the education program manager at Epic Games, uh, which, you know, in that role, my, you know, primary mission is to support educators and help um, bring, you know, some of the tools that we'll talk to you about into the classroom. Um, and it's been really wonderful because prior to this, I was a teacher for 28 years, um, just retired to to start this second career, which is uh, basically I left my dream job to come to my dream job. And uh, it's been pretty uh, epic. Uh, so 
you know, when I was teaching, I was teaching game design and development. You know, Kathy shared a little bit of our background um, with our game center, which really started a whole lot in terms of my career in game-based learning and understanding the power of games for, for learning and community and all of that. Um, and when I was teaching in the classroom, my students were using a variety of tools to make their games. Some of which were sandbox environments like Minecraft and Fortnite Creative, um, which then got me involved in um, kind of speaking with, uh, with Epic Games about other possibilities around education. And, you know, here I am now, um, you know, on the education team, um, you know, really uh, feeling excited about the potential we have to, to work with um, teachers and schools and, you know, really help students get the, um, the career skills that um, working with Interactive 3D can bring to them. You know, at Epic, you know, a lot of you probably know Epic. Um, uh, <laughs> Kathy, I think, has a fun fact for you maybe about, the, uh, about Fortnite. But Fortnite is a game that um, you may have heard of that we've published. Um, and there are other games that we've published as well. Um, any of you longtime gamers probably remember Unreal Tournament. Um, that was one of the games we used to play in our game center. And um, in addition to publishing, you know, a real big part and probably, you know, in a lot of ways, the primary part of um, Epic is in terms of, of software, you know, in basically um, Unreal Engine, which is the content creation tool that is an industry standard in terms of making games, but um, goes far beyond the game industry, um, you know, into, into many different um, verticals uh, outside of games, and we'll talk about that. But uh, did you have something to share, Kathy? I do have a fun fact to share. So, um, you know, we say, I feel like, you know, people throw this around loosely, like, oh, our game is the most popular game in the world, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, the fun fact is, yes, indeed, Fortnite is the most popular game uh, in the world. And this is according to a study uh, that was published in September 2020. And um, the fun fact is, or in this report, it says that Fortnite is the most played video game on the planet and at that time so this is a year ago with 3.8 billion cumulatively cumulative days played that's, that's crazy a that's a lot of days so anyway i haven't, I haven't even been alive that many days no no um, one has. <laughs> so anyway so we're talking about interactive 3d a bit and um you know, we use that term a lot and um, we have this wonderful four minute uh, video that will tell you everything you need to know about interactive 3D and, um, and why, you know, you'll want to know more. Hi, I'm Amanda, a community manager at Epic Games. And today we're talking about interactive 3D. We're experiencing a major shift in the way we work and communicate. We've moved from text and images to video, and now to a world where interactive 3D content is the norm. We're going to explore the technology that powers interactive 3D content and the skills that will be important in this immersive new world. What do we mean by interactive 3D? What we're really talking about is the ability to interact with the digital world the same way you do with the real one. Playing a game like Fortnite on your phone or computer is an example of this. Or it could be a virtual reality or augmented reality experience where you need to use special glasses or hardware to view and take part. But interactive 3D is not just for entertainment. Now we can simulate the real world in a meaningful way. For example, doctors can practice surgery before ever touching a patient and it's possible to not only simulate what a surgeon would see during the operation, but also how it should feel. Car designers can try out new designs more easily. Usually designers start with a full-size clay model of a new car, and that can cost a lot to produce and take weeks to make. Now they can try out and make changes to their designs in a virtual design space. And we can experience this in our everyday life too. Before you buy a new cool graphic tee, you can turn around a digital version and look at it from every angle, or even customize it with your own colors and designs. So how does this work? The technology that powers all of these experiences is called real-time rendering. This is how the Weather Channel creates realistic simulations of hurricanes and storms that the newscaster can interact with on screen. In a traditional 3D animation, 
The film you are watching is made up of a collection of static images that are rendered by a computer. Rendering is the process of converting a 3D model to a 2D image. Oftentimes, it can take a computer or a collection of computers days, weeks, or even months to render an entire film. To further complicate things, if an artist wants to make even the smallest change, the entire thing has to be re-rendered. With real-time graphics, the 3D computer-generated visuals that you see are rendered and displayed almost instantly, making it easy for a director to make changes to special effects instantly and collaborate on a virtual set with actors. A real-time engine is the software needed to create these immersive experiences. An Unreal Engine is an award-winning real-time engine. We call it an engine, but it's not like a car engine. It's actually computer software created with code. The creation process for Interactive 3D involves bringing 3D models into a real-time engine where behaviors and intelligence can be applied. This can include lighting, materials, physics, AI or artificial intelligence, user interaction, audio, animation, VFX, cinematics, and more. The result is not a simple image, but a 3D world that you can explore and interact with. As you move around, your view of the world changes and you get to see different things, as though you've stepped inside a film. As the industry changes and we start to see interactive 3D everywhere, the demand for people to create these experiences is skyrocketing. Real-time 3D skills are in huge demand. In the future, everyone will be a creator. Want to be part of building this immersive new world? Get started with Unreal Online Learning for free today. Okay, <laughs> so um, I love that video. I think Kathy loves that I love video that video well. also. Uh, you know, what, one of the, the striking things about that and, and what's so important and, and really in the context of what we're talking about with esports and the roles that students, um, you know, can kind of aspire to um, is that, you know, Unreal Engine and other interactive, you know, 3D tools are being, are really transforming so many different industries architecture, games, film and TV, um, automotive, broadcast. Uh, I, love, <laughs> I love that scene in that video when they show the simulation um, at the weather channel and give you this sense of, of what this weather event is doing without um, you know, risking everybody's lives and all that. <laughs> um, you know, so it's really neat and advertising and fashion and other industries. So um, and what I think is really neat is that when the software essentially became freely available, um, people from different industries, I think, started seeing what they could do with it. And it, it sort of evolved in a very interesting and organic way by people using the tools. Um, you, you could feel free to throw it in the chat. Anybody recognize um, what this scene might be from? So, Oh, I don't know. Give them yep, a chance I there, Monroe. So, thank you, the Mindy. Mandalorian. Yes. <laughs> so season one and now season three of the Mandalorian all use um, LED video wall technology um, in order to do all of the scenery. So basically, you know, in virtual production, what's happening is instead of using, I loved in the video too, they show that green screen scene of them getting onto the airplane where the actors have to kind of just walk as if they're getting on an airplane. Well. In this case, with the scenery like this, they're acting in the environment and the production and the post-production just can happen, um, you know, very easily. And that, that you know, virtual production is, is huge now. And again, being transformed because of real-time rendering and some of the things you saw in that video. This is just a very small sampling. Um, and this is even old. Um, but of different uh, movies and, and, and TV that is using this technology in their production. Just a sampling, it's also interesting to see, and you saw a lot in the video about automotive and, and aerospace and all these different industries that are using um, real-time technology and, and interactive 3D um, 
you know, it was really neat to see how with the, the auto industry, how they used to use physical models, you know, all the time. And now they can do virtualize all that as well, which is really neat. I, I love this um, because I know when I was in school and I think when most of us here were in school, um, this certainly wasn't a position we could aspire to. And I, I think most of us aren't even aware that this exists yet, but media and entertainment is becoming so immersive that this experiential designer role is now becoming a, a very you know, viable job for, for um, people to, to work towards. And it's so neat to think about like, um, you know, I look at this scene and I'm like, you know, I go to, I go to a lot of live music and a lot of concerts and, you know, they always have these great screens with, you know, that are just projections on a screen or, or such. And to think of where we're going with immersing ourselves in these environments is, is pretty exciting. And to be somebody who can contribute to this, I think is, would be a pretty neat job for some of our, you know, um, students and esports athletes to aspire to. Um, so one of the, the programs that we have is something called Unreal Futures um, Careers in Real Time. And this um, allows th this, I'll, I'll show you a quick video just to kind of show you about the program. It's a minute long video. There's never been a more exciting or empowering time to be a creator. That's because a technology called Interactive 3D is changing the way we live and work. When you're creating things on this platform, you're creating it for all the platforms. Interactive 3D simulates the real world in a meaningful way. The result isn't a simple image or video. It's a three-dimensional world you can explore and change. In the past, it may have taken hours, if not days, for a final image to render. But with real-time 3D tools like Unreal Engine, the process is almost instantaneous. In this project, we will explore how Unreal is being used in the advertising industry. In the rest of this series, we'll explore step by step how Media Monks achieved this finished product. And you can follow along as we work through a similar shot together. No prior experience is necessary. We'll provide you with all the files you need. So, let's go. Sweet PowerPoint. Um, so the Unreal Futures Careers in Advertising, uh, that, that course, it's an online course on our online learning portal that Kathy shared earlier, and basically shows you how um, professionals in that industry are using interactive 3D and real-time technology. And then through the course, students um, engage in recreating that Oreo cookie ad that you saw at the end. And what's really neat about that is is they're learning enough in Unreal Engine to do a very worthwhile project. Um, Unreal Engine is sometimes thought of as being pretty, pretty big um, in terms of what's possible, but it's neat to see that in a span of, a, of about a four video tutorial series that kids can recreate that ad um, using the camera, learning to use the sequencer, which is for animation, using, you know, working with the lighting and working with assets in Unreal Engine. Um, when we first launched that course, um, we accompanied it with a competition for kids to create an Earth Day advertisement um, in Unreal Engine. And uh, the results were, were really great. Uh, if we have time at the end, maybe we'll be able to show one of those videos. Uh, but anyway, when it comes to Unreal Engine, you know, we always like to chat about a couple of these myths. Um, one is that you need to code to use Unreal Engine. Um, not true. The, it, this is an example here, this scene. Um, world building and you know, prototyping and things in Unreal Engine, you know, often does not, I mean, does not require coding by any means. Um, in fact, beyond even building a scene, there are a number of assets and things you could use that are already essentially programmed. So you could very easily create like a walkthrough experience and have a character that you can control in the experience without any coding. Um, one of our uh, you know, kind of rock star educators, Nick Pant, he one of the lesson plans in our library is uh, creating a virtual history museum in Unreal Engine. And he has his students essentially build, you know, a walk through museum with exhibits that the, you know, each student does the research, they create this museum and then their peers can walk through or they do a video walk through of it. And that's with no coding. Um, 
you know, another thing a lot of people think about is um, they, they know that there is a programming language, C++, behind Unreal Engine. Um, but Unreal Engine also has something called blueprints. Um, so students don't need to know how to code in C++ per se at all. But blueprints has all of the constructs of computer science, you know, in a, in a as you can see, a visual manner. So this is an example of in one of the games that kids can create where it looks to when a player collects a coin, when they collect a coin, it removes the coin and, and you know, on, based on collision and such. So this is walking through that process. And then finally, and this is one of my favorite things to really hope to emphasize and hope that comes across, um, you do not need to be an Unreal en Engine expert to teach with Unreal Engine. Um, picture here is Eric Elder, who um, does workshops with kids um, on video game design. And, you know, he kind of like me, kind of like many of us um, are by all means um, a self-proclaimed non-expert in Unreal Engine. Uh, but one of the goals of our team is to, to provide enough resources that teachers can facilitate the process of, of learning Unreal Engine without having to be an expert. Um, and when I was in the classroom, one of the greatest joys I had was when I learned I could, you know, kind of provide opportunities for kids and learn alongside them and support them through the process, but I didn't have to know everything in order to bring a tool into the classroom. Um, so while we're at it, um, the, we have a lot of, uh, I'm going to share some of the resources that we have available. Um, in terms of computer science, we have a, uh, these five lessons uh, that were, went with Hour of Code last year to build a 3D platform game uh, in Unreal Engine. And you, know, you can see there are these beautiful assets that we had created for this project. Um, the asset kit is available you know, for free. And it's, uh, it's really nice because we purposefully went with like a non-gender specific character, a lot of bright colors to try to be more inclusive. Um, and it, each of these um, activities has, uh, whoops, each activity has a lesson plan, a teacher's guide and a student guide, and they're all tied to ISTE and CSTA standards. And Kathy just posted a link in there, um, which, you know, if you take a look, you'll see like the step-by-step -step guides, I really like because um, again, if you as a teacher, my recommendation would always be go through the activity yourself and prepare, you know, to, you know, so you're familiar with it. But then it's very step by step. Kids start working through it. There are call outs for teachers to support you. Students start to support one another as well. And, um, and you can really work through this and then have kids expand upon the game on their own. We've also been doing a lot with Fortnite creative mode, um, which, uh, is, is, is a great tool. And this gets really interesting with the eSports community as well, because um, you know, some groups have started to even hold competitions in terms of whether it be a build competition, Fortnite Creative, or an engineering competition, or sometimes even creating a game and, and, and such that others can play in a competitive environment. But uh, similar to Minecraft, if you're familiar with Minecraft, Fortnite Creative is a sandbox environment. Um, so kids are, uh, you know, have that whole open slate in terms of um, how, you know, what they could create, you know, and all of that. And I'm going to actually hand this, the rest of this slide over to Kathy because she's a, she's a big fan of the sandbox environment. I am a big that. fan of the sandbox environment. So um, what I love about it is that, um, you know, you're meeting the kids where they are. So this is, we're just leveraging their knowledge and kind of like Steve said, you don't have to be the expert in the room. You can let them be the expert and teach you. Um, Fortnite Creative, you, you don't realize it really because you, you have other thoughts, right? Uh, but this program, so let's call it a program, this tool has these incredible graphics, gorgeous, gorgeous graphics. And once you get in creative mode, um, you can take, there's all these prefabs and galleries. So you can actually build something quite substantial and gorgeous just out of the pieces that are available inside game, which is 
kind of crazy. Um, the thing that we love about um, sandbox games is that um, there's something called low, low floor. They have a low floor and a high ceiling. So you can enter, you can have kids create things in this tool where it's just like, okay, you're basic, you're, you're placing things, you're looking for the objects in the inventory and you're building something wonderful. And you can have kids build crazy things. Uh, the, the sky is the limit, right? Um, this is the referring to the high ceiling. Um, you know, they can, there's a lot, like every piece you place in Fortnite Creative is codable, right? So you can um, turn on all these different if thens and conditionals and everything. And you can see that there's also actually, um, I guess what else I want to say before I go there, because I'll lose my train of thought, is that, um, you know, Fortnite Creative is available on all, every platform. Um, and also you have the opportunity to real time collaborate in real time so the kids can work together in their worlds. And um, it's available anywhere, right? So it's like they, if let's say you sign into a computer at school um, and you're working on this world, you it comes with you when you if you go home, you go to a friend's house, whatever, it is there with you. And then we also, I think, I don't know if this is the same slide or the next slide, uh, but there are also a set of uh, Fortnite creative hour of code lessons. Oh, there they are. Uh, they are gorgeous, just like the Unreal Engine hour of code lessons. They all have a lesson plan, teacher's guide, student guide, step-by-step -step activities. Um, I have done these. These are great. And it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, I really made this. You feel so accomplished when uh, you complete these activities. So I did it as a as an adult with less experience than the kids. And it's just really amazing. It's a great stepping stool, stone for what else is, uh, what uh, things that are possible inside of Fortnite Creative. So I have, I actually have the site here and I will drop that link in the chat as well. And a, a shameless plug, if I might, is um, after this session, uh, Brian Dickman, aka Cleverlike, and I are going to go through, we're doing a session on game design and coding in Fortnite Creative, and we'll take you on a tour of, um, of these activities, so you get to see them in game and such, um, you know, so stay, and, you know, stick around with us for the next right. hour, if you would. Oh, okay. No, oh, they're amazing, amazing activities. So um, the, recently, whoops. There we go. Uh, recently, the Fortnite creative team, we partnered with Time Magazine and created an in-game learning experience uh, called the March Through Time. This, what, uh, well, Steve's gonna show us a video. To overlook the urgency of the moment. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. I have a dream today. Yep, yeah, that uh, that experience is available in game and um, kind of goes to show, you know, some of the the learning content that can be. Um, you know, that can be okay. Here we go. Sound. Oh, you have another video. Yeah, I know, I know. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so it was a really powerful experience. And um, as you're in the game world, um, on a number of Jumbotrons is Dr. King, you know, giving the I Have a Dream speech. And then there's some interactivity and things and those um, like museum like exhibits that you saw pretty, uh, pretty amazing. And, 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 you know, epic is looking to create more of these like experiences. I mean, this one's very educational and very powerful. There are a lot of um, concert experiences you may have seen that are happening in, in Fortnite. So they're creating this environment where, you know, millions of people can convene and be part of events together, which is certainly, um, you know, taking us to that next level in terms of the metaverse and such. Um, I kind of skipped this slide before, but we also have a number of um, lesson plans for Fortnite creative mode um, that just cover all different content areas. And these are all created by teachers for teachers. So, you know, our goal is to um, both support teachers by having, helping you learn how to use the tools and then also have lessons that you can bring right into the classroom. 
Oh, and Kathy will probably also want to talk about. Oh, yes. So um, kind of our sleeper hit here um, is this tool called Twin Motion. And um, the, okay, so everything's pretty amazing, but this one is, well, and, and this one is also equally amazing. So we have a video. We have a video to kind of just show you what Twin Motion's about. You have a little bit about twin motion, um, which, like Kathy said, is definitely a sleeper hit. We do we do a lot of trainings, and this is something I hope that um, some of you will be able to take advantage of. But we do um, some extensive teacher training. Um, we do something called our secondary accelerator, which is um, where we train teachers to bring all of our tools into the classroom, and we do these things called an Unreal Educator Boot Camp, which is specifically Unreal Engine, and we never charge for you know, any of the trainings and such. Um, so we're really trying to, you know, just basically expand, you know, the, um, the use of these tools and really help kids learn these, learn these skills that are gonna take them, you know, into potential opportunities for industry. Um, so, you know, feel free to reach out to us about opportunities that'll be coming up. Um, I'll also share our Discord channel where we always post things like that. Um, but what I was gonna say about that is in, the secondary accelerator, a lot of teachers, that's the first time they're seeing twin motion. And so many of them then go right into the classroom and decide that that's a tool they can bring right in. It's easy to use. It gets kids into interactive 3D, you know, um, and, you know, what you can do in terms of the playback and, you know, producing, um, you know, a walkthrough type experience is pretty remarkable. So kids have a great output from their project when they use that as well. Um, so yeah, in terms of our products, uh, there's no charge. Um, all of our products are, are available. Um, you know, if you have an Epic Games account, they're all very, you know, you could just download them all. Uh, we do actually even have an education um, opportunity for you to get Twin Motion, where we can provide a standalone installer. So for some schools that have challenges with having student accounts and things that helps that cause. And we're also working on the same type of situation with Unreal Engine. So we're really trying to reduce those you know, barriers to entry and such. Uh, we also have a program called the Epic Mega Grant Program, which um, $100 million was, um, was allocated in, in grants to fund really cool projects um, that were created by people using these tools. Um, and what I was so drawn to Epic by initially is that educators or education was one of the areas of this grant funding. Um, in fact, I applied for it and was awarded um, a mega grant while I was still in the classroom, 
which is what got me kind of started with working with the education team. Um, so it's really, you know, I mean, I, I was very excited that, you know, that education is something that's, you know, clearly honored and valued. Um, here are some of the links and things that Kathy had shared um, throughout, but I'll leave this here if there are any. I, she might not have been able to share the Teaching with Fortnite creative course. Um, I'll drop that in the chat. That's an actual online course that will help you learn how to use Fortnite Creative in the classroom. And we also just released one um, called Teaching with Unreal Engine. And I'll drop that in as well. Um, and with that, I would love to, we have definitely a few minutes for questions. I'd love to um, you know, honor and listen and hear any questions. I'd love for people to come off of mute if you'd like. Um, we're a small enough group, I believe, that we can pull that off. And Mike Washburn's here. How about that? What? Snuck in. Must have taken a break from Satisfactory. Or no, actually, that's not true. He's still playing Satisfactory. Like, like a, ninja. a ninja, of course. Well, I also wanted to add about Twin Motion, just that, um, well, the ease of use, right? So once you have it downloaded and installed, everything that you saw in that video was drag and drop. And that has, you know, the scenes, the environments, the, the foliage, the vegetation, all of that is built into that tool. Um, and you, there is a Epic now owns Quixel's mega scans. And so if it's not right inside the inside, I keep saying in game, in tool, you can search for it in the Quixel's mega scan. So, I mean, I keep thinking, oh my goodness, if I had a classroom right here now, if I had kids, I would be all over this. Like I would have them, um, you know, just telling stories with this incredibly powerful tool. And how great would it be as, um, you know, as the grader of such stories and of uh, work just to be able to see something so incredible, you know, not that other things aren't incredible, but something that would really, that are, you know, they're learning real world skills by uh, using these tools that are so accessible. So, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said it, <laughs> and now you can ask your, ask your questions. Don't be shy. Or, or be shy. Or be shy. <laughs> we see that our host has joined the call, Mr. Hickman. Thank you. Glad to be here. This is a very interesting. Well, I do have a question while I'm here. Oh, Excellent. we knew um, it. So is Twin Motion, is that accessible and is it free or is it uh, or free to use? Or, or? Yes. Yeah. Well, all of the Epic tools are free. So um, Twin Motion, when you uh, go to the website, it'll say that there is like some kind of licensing, but it is free for educators. There is a version that like if you dig just to maybe scroll down a little bit, you'll I'm see what the pricing is and then it'll say free for educators. And then for, I guess it's Unreal Engine, um, it is free until I think you make your first million dollars. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always say, you know what, when people get to that point, they're happy to, they're happy yes. to pay any kind of royalties. Um, wow. But it is true. The I, I dropped a, a link in the chat too. Twin Motion, I had mentioned, has like a, if you, Give them your information as an educator. Um, you can get an offline or, or um, uh, you know, standalone installer. So that way, you also wouldn't even need to log in with the Epic Launcher or anything, and you can just install it on all your lab computers. And there are solutions like that for Unreal Engine as well. Very nice. Yeah, I like your Elmo in the background there. Yes. 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 <laughs> So I think uh, Mike Washburn, he's just double checking that he's not over his $1 million limit there. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> he's got to start paying us. <laughs> he, yeah. Well, we do just have a couple minutes. Let's oh, around. here's oh, um, Manraj wants to know, will you make more content within Epic? Um, could you elaborate on the, the question? Like, and me... Manraj, you can come off of... Uh, Mute also, and Grace, free for everybody, kids, whoever wants to use it. If you're an educator or have something to do with education, well, Twin Motion is free, yeah. Unreal and, is free. 
and the other tools, right? There's no charge for even like Fortnite. No, you know, there's no charge. There's no charge for Unreal Engine um, as well. So, no class size limit. Nothing. Nothing. Nada. In fact, the more the more the merrier. <laughs> Um, and Manraj, it, so when you say more content, um, thanks, Steve. When you say more content, uh, I mean, gosh, if you saw how the things that are included in the Epic products is always changing and being added to, it's, you know, it's constant. In terms of us as an education team, we're continually creating new content and learning experiences. Oh, so Manraj is saying like, um, sorry, like more games, more things within your games. Yeah, and if so similar in that regard, like with, let's say Fortnite Creative, additional devices are always being added, which allows for more functionality when you're creating games and certainly the same with, with Unreal Engine and all. Um, ah, so good question on the lesson plans right now. So. Yes, the process is in the works. Um, we do have the template available, I think, on our lesson plan site. And we're going to create a, a mechanism for educators to you know, submit lesson plans that would then be reviewed and possibly make it up to our library. And Galad, it's late for you. Thank you for staying up so late with us, as always. Two AM, man. Oof. Oh, Mindy, thank uh, you so much for moderating. Yeah. Yes, thank and you. It was very, very interesting. And thank everyone, you. thank you for joining us this evening, or I mean, early after, late afternoon for you. Thank you, and Gilad. My goodness, middle of the night. <laughs> and I don't know if it's the same Zoom room, but I'm about to log off and log back in um, for the next session. So. Yeah, it's a different one. I actually will. Go open that as soon as we leave here. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> and Thank then, you, um, I guess I don't know how to get access to the recording, but if you contact the um, yes, Riverside, Dennis will Esports. be putting, will be posting it, and then he'll give everyone uh, that information. Awesome. All right. Well, well thank you everybody. so much. Sorry. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye.